And we're back. This is number three on that homework assignment in which we're going over the answers. Uh, I'm glad I stopped the video because this one has a lot going on. Continuity-wise, we have what appears to be a break in the graph and then another rogue point up here. This is going to be a non-removable discontinuity because the break does not allow us to converge to a specific point for continuity. Breaks and asymptotes are going to be places where it's non-removably discontinuous. So I'm just, I'm going to go for it right now. At x equals negative 1, 2, 3, 4, we're non-removably discontinuous. And at x equals 1, 2, the asymptote also makes that non-removably discontinuous. Removable discontinuities. That's basically a place where you have an open circle, which basically is sort of like a giant pothole that does not allow you to cross. All right. So, um, although these are holes in the graph, again, the break does the break takes away its ability to be removable. This is a closed circle. That means it's not a discontinuity at all. The function is continuous. It's sort of like it's sort of like you just had a stop sign, kind of, and then you just kept going on a, on a, you just turned right on a road. Okay, so you can keep going. That is not a discontinuity. This one right here, the fact that there is a, a, like a closed dot down there does nothing for non-removability or removability. So what about this? Here versus here. I talked about it in a previous example. There's no difference in the removability aspect of a function at a hole versus a hole in which the function actually exists there at a specific spot. See, f of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 equals 1. f of 8 is undefined. However, both of those are removable discontinuities. So we are removably discontinuous at x equals 6 and x equals 8. All right, now let's talk about where does this, where are the C values that make the limit equal to one? Well, I'll start out with the curly braces. Again, we've got a break in the graph, so the limit actually does not exist at negative one, two, three, negative four. But just to the right of negative four, like negative 3.99999999999999. That limit does exist. So what we do is we say, put a parenthesis right there to indicate don't include 4, but include everything to negative 1. And include negative 1 because the limit from the left and the limit from the right, they both converge to 1. Now, what are the other spots where the limit actually equals 1? This is, students get tricked by this all the time. When they see that rogue dot right there, they're like, oh, the limit equals 1 right there. But it doesn't. The limit as x approaches 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 is equal to 1, 2, 3. It can equal 3 and 1 at the same time. The limit as x approaches 6 is 3. Not one. Okay, so don't put a six down right there. Mm -mm. Check your work. See if you fell into that trap. However, when you go to eight, it does equal one. It does equal one. There's no, um, yeah, it equals one. So that's number three. Let's do number four. This one was a bit out there. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so where do we have discontinuities? 
Well, you just have to take it by faith that when, as we continue with these, looks like wave, these are wave functions, could be sine, could be cosine. Um, these are interesting. These are, call, these are called dampening functions, which means you put an exponential like e to the x or e to the negative x in front of one of these babies, and that's what makes it go infinitely bigger like that. But anyway, e, e to the x or e to the negative x in front of like a sine or a cosine. If you're interested and you've got plenty of time on your hands, look up, uh, I think they're called damping or dampening functions. Um, yeah, let's get to this though. Non-removable discontinuities. That means a break in the graph. Found it at x equals 1. Do we have any vertical asymptotes? No. Do we have any more breaks? We do not. So onto the removable ones, there's one at 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And this original document, it's hard to tell right there. So, you know, I'll, I'll give it to you if you didn't have it or if you do, it's okay. Uh, this is negative 2. Again, the, the idea behind uh, this remote learning is that you guys you get enough practice with it so that there's actually like a lasting understanding with this even though we weren't in class together, okay? So I'm not really grading you based on total accuracy. Hopefully you figured that out at this point. <sighs> okay, where does the limit as x approaches c? What's, what's that whole deal? So this one actually, I shouldn't have asked this question here, but it does, it, it makes for good analysis. All the places where the limit equals 1 for sure are not at 1 because the limit from the left does not equal the limit from the right, but at 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Uh, 5.8? Yeah. And then at Six, seven, seven point four ish. Eight, almost like eight point seven, maybe. And then nine, ten. Uh, looks like eleven. Let's just go with eleven. Twelve, thir thirteen point two ish. And then fourteen, fifteen. Uh, looks like about sixteen. But it, it, it keeps going, and it, here's the thing. It doesn't keep going in any intelligible pattern because I made up this function, and I just started drawing uh, curves from, you know, maybe not exact measurements of functions. Uh, so we really can't make a very intelligent estimation for what it will be in the future. But it seems like the distance between the places where the limit equals 1 keeps increasing in distance. See, there is 0.8 between them. Then there is uh, 1.6. 1.3, that's closer. But then it's 2. Okay, 2.3 is getting farther away. But bottom line is we can't make a distinguishing, um, like a definitive statement about that particular uh, answer. And we have to go in the opposite direction as well. Because at negative one and a half, it equals one. And then it keeps growing. So, so the phenomenon that's happening here is just happening in reverse over here, it seems. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, at 10, 11, 12, 13.2. And really, I should have written this in reverse order with the dot, dot, dot coming in from the left. And, and so, so that one was, I don't know, ki kind of a, a train wreck in terms of having to describe it. But, but sometimes the train wrecks teach us a lot more than the nice, neat uh, example that looks exactly like what you saw in the notes. So hopefully you guys, when you were thinking through it, you were thinking through it correctly. 
if you weren't thinking through it correctly, I hope this video and the one previous to it helped a lot. Um, this is really the intro to calculus, which I think once you, you get on the right footing with this limits uh, business, that the stuff after tends to come forth a lot more smoothly if you are firmly rooted in a right understanding of limits. So if you're not taking calculus next year, um, it's okay. Limits are fun. And if you are taking calculus next year, limits will be the building block of everything you do. But they'll look a lot different. They won't, they won't look like this much at all. So, all right, I'm going to stop talking now and let you guys get on with your lives. See ya.